Hello everybody, I hope that you are well. My name is Christiane and welcome to my channel, Backpacking Bananas. The next few videos is going to be a very, very special series. About a week ago, I arrived in Thailand for the third time and this time is extra special because I am running my dive and adventure retreat. This is something that uh, was completely my idea. I've put together an entire itinerary to be diving and doing fun things throughout Thailand for the next two weeks. I invited you guys um, a couple of months ago and this trip sold out in four minutes. It was absolutely insane. Now everyone has arrived and we are just having the best time ever. I'm so happy with the group that's here everyone is so lovely and I cannot wait to introduce you to them. So the team we've got out here in Thailand is myself of course, we have Tanisha my lovely assistant who is going to be joining us out here and we have the lovely Brian who is the owner and a dive instructor at LBD La Bombona Diving in Koh Tao. So the three of us are going to be leading the group here in Thailand for the next two weeks. We have people from the UK, USA, Canada, Netherlands, Italy and everyone has come together to have the next two weeks as an epic adventure. So the trip actually started in Bangkok. We picked everyone up from the airport and that evening had the most beautiful dinner looking over the Wataran Temple. It was really nice for everyone to get acquainted with each other and then the next day we set out exploring Bangkok. We went to the railway market and we went to the floating market. We also then got the opportunity to actually visit the Wataran Temple which is what we were looking over the night before so we had a little explore around before heading to the train station to get the sleeper train and that's because this trip isn't about Bangkok I didn't even film a vlog in Bangkok don't worry you didn't miss that the trip is really starting in the islands hence dive and adventure retreat so after coming off the sleeper train in Champon we had a transfer to the ferry port and then the ferry took us to the most magical idyllic island of Koh Tao it was a very very bumpy ride to say the least. It's not normally that windy this time of year in Koh Tao. We're here at the end of January, beginning of February, which is supposed to be the best time of year for it. Don't know what happened with the weather. We had a few people throwing up, but all good. So now we have arrived on the island of Koh Tao and the guests on the trip are either getting their open water qualification with us, which means that they've never dived in their life before or they've, they're not qualified and they're learning to get qualified for the very first time. We have some people getting their advanced open water and then we also just have some fun divers on the trip who are already qualified and are literally quite just here to enjoy the underwater sea life here in Koh Tao. So the day we arrived everyone had their orientations to figure out what they're going to be doing for the next few days. We had the most gorgeous dinner at Barracuda restaurant which is the best restaurant here in Koh Tao and then the next day is when the fun kicked off and everyone was getting in the water having their pool session and I joined the fun divers for a beautiful little dive off the coast of Koh Tao. where things get a little bit sad for me personally because when I was going down on that second dive um, my ears were squeaking as I was equalizing which I thought this is weird it wasn't super painful but it didn't feel quite right I was still able to complete the dive and I wasn't in pain uh, but then after the dive we went for lunch in a really lovely restaurant called a vegetable would highly recommend and I just felt like my ears were becoming progressively more painful and I didn't know if it was water stuck in there I wasn't too sure what the problem is and so I asked Brian and Brian said 
it seems from all of your symptoms that you have a mild case of barrow trauma which is essentially where the eardrum becomes quite inflamed and so one you can take ibuprofen which is going to reduce the inflammation it's also going to reduce the pain a lot um, so that's exactly what I did and that did completely work it completely stopped the pain uh, but I've also been advised to not die for the next few days which is a little bit sad but I'm glad it's happening to me and not anyone else on the dive retreat because I've already done all of the fun dives here in Koh Tao and so if I'm gonna miss any part of the trip like this is okay for me to do. Um, I'm just so so keen to be you know healthy and have healthy ears for sale rock which is what we're doing in a few days time. So I'm taking a few days off diving to let my ears recover so that I will hopefully be good for the sail rock dive. But today I have come on the boat anyway, quite literally just for the boat vibes. Like I always say like half the enjoyment for me of diving, half of it's the underwater fun and half of it is just the boat life. It's just being in beautiful exotic destinations with warm weather, out on the sun, being able to just go in the water and just boat life. Boat life, I am such a big fan of. And it's really fun to see how everyone else is getting along with everything that they are doing. Know where the divers are because you can see those bubbles underneath the water so there's going to be some divers down there if you look over here there's going to be some divers down beneath there some down beneath there as well here's the open water crew doing their second to last dive isn't it Yoo-hoo! feeling positive yeah. yes and here's the birthday girl Yoo-hoo! what a beautiful location just had the most relaxing yoga session. I wanted to film it and I wasn't allowed. No phones, no cameras, no nothing. So if that tells you how relaxing it is, it really, really was. Um, amazing yoga studio, loved it so much. And I don't always love yoga, so that one was really, really brilliant. And now the party doesn't stop, or the action doesn't stop. Uh, we're now doing a trapeze show and participation. Oh yes, that is what is about to happen. We're just arriving at the resort right now. Oh my goodness gracious. We are signing our lives away, obviously. This is our waist belt, which would have been put onto us immediately. We've been here approximately 30 seconds and we've already been strapped up. You put your arms up and it just goes Goal of the class is to get caught by Mabel, your catch up. She can be on this bar at the end of the class, swinging back and forth. You'll be up on the platform up there, holding onto the bar. She's going to call a ready hip, and you're going to swing out and go upside down to the knees of the bar. Hopefully, the pendulums will meet if we get the timing right. Grab wrist with the catcher, 
and then fly away. That's so it. fun. So that's what we're aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> no hesitation. <laughs> Ready. had two practice goes of going, getting our legs up, going upside down, swinging up the legs, but now is another added level of difficulty because when we're upside down with our hands free, we're going to be grabbing, not a thing, a person, their hands, the person is Mabel, here she is, that's who we grab. To God, it gets more and more terrifying each time. <laughs> You'd think it would get like less nerve wracking, but it doesn't, and I don't know why. As you can see, the weather is not on our side this morning, but it's not gonna stop us from going where we want to go. Oh no, because today, and this is the last thing that we're doing in Koh Tao, but arguably it's also a Copenhagen activity as well, we are diving Sail Rock. Sail Rock is a famous dive site located about halfway between Koh Tao and Copenhagen. Goodbye, Koh Tao. So we loaded up the boat with all of our things and waved goodbye to Koh Tao for the last time. Here it is, this is Sail Rock. What is here is actually Koh Tao, so we can actually still see it. And then here is Koh Penyang. Absolutely beautiful dive. All the schools of fish, all the massive barracudas, all the coral. Oh, it was so beautiful. I came up like, that was amazing. And then we spoke to the other groups and they saw a whale shark. <gasps> if you don't know, I've been searching for a whale shark my entire scuba diving career. I've been scuba diving for <laughs> eight years now and I've never ever ever seen a whale shark and almost everyone in the group sure a whale shark! Ah! 
Yeah. I know a lot of them got footage of it. Um, they, it was like literally circling around them. I'm jealous, but at the same time, I'm just so, so happy for them. One day it will happen for me. One day I will see a whale shark. I have no doubt about that. <laughs> because I'm just gonna keep trying, okay? We've still got the Liverpool to go. We also still have one more dive to go at Sail Rock. As for my ears, that is still a bit of a questionable one. So for the first 20 minutes of that dive, my ears were perfect and I was like, yes, they're back to normal. And then they blocked for like five minutes and I was like, oh no. But then they opened up again. And then for like the last like 10, 15 minutes of the dive, they were just a bit funny. Like um, the, the strong squeak in the right ear was back again. I wasn't in any pain, but I just knew it wasn't quite right. And so I've taken some more ibuprofen. I'm not in any pain right now because I really would like to do the second dive. And I've spoken to Leo, who's our dive master for this dive. And I said, hey, look, I really want to try this dive, but if for whatever reason I, I cannot complete it because of my ears, is there a way of like, me finishing the dive before everyone else um, because I do, would not want to like cut the sh dive short for anyone else and he said yeah that's fine you know just let me know I'll take you to the top and then I'll come back down with the others and we'll complete the dive so I was like okay that sounds good um, I like the sound of that because I would really like to try I just hate the thought of like obviously trying and then not being able to complete it and then the rest of the group can't complete it as well but that won't be the case. So we've just had a little bit of lunch. Um, everyone's on their high from seeing the whale shark. And then I guess in an hour or so, we're gonna head down again for our second dive. Is that actually a whale shark right there? Swimming away from us as we've just entered the water? You've got to be kidding me. the whale shark again for the rest of the dive but just as we were resurfacing people from the boat were calling out to us that the whale shark was right by us just go back down and you'll see it and lo and behold there was a whale shark a huge one swimming gracefully at a shallow depth Seeing a whale shark for the first time was absolutely unbelievable, even if it was a bit chaotic. We'd actually finished our dive, but I still had 80 bar left in my tank, so when someone shouted that the whale shark was literally right there, I had to go down and see the big guy. Or lady, honestly, I don't know. It's taken me eight years of diving to finally see a whale shark, and I've quite literally gone to destinations before that have been known for whale sharks to try and spot one. I didn't want to ever put myself in a situation where they are feeding them though, I wanted to see one truly in the wild where they are not guaranteed and that was what this was. Whale sharks aren't overly common at Sail Rock and we managed to see them. Some of the guys on this trip were seeing this guy on their first ever fun dive after qualifying, which is absolutely mad. I hope they don't think that every dive will be quite as good as this one in the future. So after having a whaley, whaley good time at Sail Rock, our dive boat went straight on to Koh Penyang. This is a route that doesn't normally exist that we managed to put together for this trip, which excited me greatly because logistically it just makes so much more sense. I know the team were keen to finally let their hair down after a super tiring five days of diving and that is exactly what we were ready to do in Copenhagen. 
Most backpackers who come to Copenhagen come for one reason only, the full moon party. And whilst we were here to attend this iconic event, we also had time to explore the island. And what a lot of people don't know is just how beautiful Copenhagen really is. There are stunning beaches and hidden gems scattered all over this island. So after a full chill day, we explored as a team to some of the best spots. First up being the Paradise Waterfall. You can swim in the pool at the bottom, swing from the rope swing, and even climb up the rocks to follow the path of the waterfall. We then visited one of my favorite beaches on the island, My Hard Beach. In the corner, it has one of those tombolos where there is a thin stretch of sand where the water comes in from either side, normally leading to an island. We chilled on the beach here and did a spot of snorkeling to see some beautiful corals and fun fish. It's not quite as exciting as whale sharks, but the water here is so clear and so gorgeous. After a few chicken fights in the water, we headed to the 420 Club Panyang, which is the most stunning place to watch the sunset. This felt like a bit of a calm before the storm because that night we would be heading to the famous full moon party. This party takes place once a month on Hardrin Beach on the very far southeast point of the island and is without a doubt one of the wildest parties in the world. And this month was no different. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever seen Hardrin quite this busy. We bought buckets upon buckets and danced the night away under the light of the full moon. I knew this would be a big one, so we scheduled in an entire hangover day to recover the next 24 hours. The morning after that, we packed our bags and it was time to leave leave the island of Copenhagen. We got a ferry to the town of Suratani, followed by a bus which took us directly to the gateway of Kausok National Park at Ratchaprapapia. Kausok is covered by the oldest evergreen rainforest in the world. You have huge limestone mountains shooting straight up into the air. You travel around by boat across the huge Kausok Lake. And when you explore deeper, you can discover caves here, wild animals, deep valleys, and much more. Our accommodation here in Kausok is actually floating on the lake. We will be staying in these rustic bamboo bungalows. When we arrived at our site, I couldn't resist being the first one in for a dip. The water here is clear and actually very warm. It's a bit like a bath. It's absolutely glorious. We hung out by our bungalows for a few hours before heading out on a sunset boat safari. <laughs> the mornings here are the most magical though. Everything feels so still and the colours of the sun are out of this world. We headed out on another boat safari this morning where they take you to places that no one else is. They turn off the motors of the boat and you just hear the roaring morning sounds of the wildlife of the rainforest. It's hard to describe just how special a place like this is. And after a one hour hike through the jungle, it was sadly time to say goodbye to our guests who were not going to be joining on the liverboard with us. This really was a sad moment for the group. It's true that you grow close to people on a group tour in a shorter amount of time, but when you go through challenges like learning to scuba dive for the first time and swinging upside down on a trapeze until an acrobat catches you, the bonds become a lot closer, a lot quicker. This group have been pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone day after day on this trip. There's been early mornings and late nights, tears of frustration and tears of joy. There's been fears faced and fears overcome. There's been friendships made and even romances for some. 
why has this become a poem? I want to say a personal thank you to all of the guests that we had on this trip. This trip sold out in four minutes and we had absolutely no idea who was going to sign up. This trip wasn't easy and every day these guys showed up with smiles on their faces, ready to give it their all. I'm so proud of their resilience and bravery as well as their kindness and patience with themselves and with the nature of traveling with a group. If you think that this trip sounds up your street and you'd like to learn to scuba dive or perhaps are already a qualified diver and want to come and dive with us, I am pleased to say we will definitely be running this trip again. We don't have confirmed dates yet, but if you want to be kept in the loop, do please sign up to the Backpacking Bananas trips mailing list. I will put the link in the description and there you can make sure that you don't miss out on any updates when we do announce the dates and put the trip on sale. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one where half of this group are continuing on to a liveaboard in the Similan Islands. I will see you then. Bye-bye.